Hey, everybody. I um, want to thank you for uh, joining us for our latest installment of MSP Business School. And Rob, I don't know if you know this. Here we go. This is our 100th episode. Shut the front door. Really? This is it. So you guys, Jeremiah and Ed, you are the lucky ones that get to be part wow. of our big 100th episode uh, anniversary here. So You guys uh, planned this perfectly. Well done, you two. Yep, you know, Rachel, the aim to please Rachel James who produces all of our MSP business schools uh, she looked at me and said your second one today is number one hundy so make wow. sure that you guys talk about it but uh, Rob it's been great working with you and unfortunately uh, once again we're without the third leg in our, our stool uh, uh, Tim McNeil today but uh, it's been great working with you guys on the podcast for the past couple of years now it's amazing yeah. to think it's been that long since we decided to do this Crazy, when we got right? locked in our houses for COVID yeah. Um, but, um, you know, really excited to, uh, to do this and look forward to the next hundred. Oh, I don't know about that, Brian. That's, that's a, oh, on, that's a heavy lift, man. Another, no, seriously. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It, we've met a lot of really interesting people and uh, this has been a good time. Definitely a good time. And it's a good thing that we have interesting people on, because if it was just you, me and Tim talking for a hundred episodes, this would have <sighs> ended after about 10. <laughs> <laughs> But as we speak a little bit about interesting people, I'm really excited to, uh, to talk about our guest today. Um, I recently met Ed Carroll and Jeremiah Smith from uh, Edison Marks through LinkedIn. You know, hey, communities help us get together, right? Yeah, yeah. And Ed reached out to me just to open up the door for a conversation. And as soon as I learned a little bit about what they were up to, I said, well, this is definitely something that fits into the brand of MSP Business School and what we're trying to share with the MSP community. So I'm really excited to have both of them on. Jeremiah, Ed, welcome. Thank you for having us, Brian. Excited to be here. Excited to chat with you. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. And I guess we might we might owe Rachel something for being able to land the 100th episode. I <laughs> tell you, you know, and I kept that a secret from everybody, including Rob. Yeah, I just <laughs> I, I just see found the out. reaction. Yeah. Wow. Well done. Well but that's done, enough fellas. about that's about enough about us and our accolades. Let's push it back <laughs> now over to you guys. You know, um, you know, I'm really you know, you guys are bringing an interesting spin on sales and marketing. And, you know, I, I'm really excited to hear how you think you can benefit MSPs and in, in where it's hitting, you know, what's pain is it hitting that maybe we're overlooking today, but before we go there, you know, one of the things that we love to tee up with is just learning a little bit about the people themselves. So maybe if each of you could take a couple minutes and just, you know, tell us about your backstory and how you ended up together. Well, yeah, we can start how we ended up together is it's started well over 30 years ago. We, we, we were on the baseball fields in East Asheville, little mountain town in North Carolina. And that's where Jeremiah and I got to know each other was there and on the basketball courts at, at elementary schools that are, as a crow flies, probably a mile apart from each other, but rival high base, schools. I liked it on the baseball field because I got visions of Bull Durham going through my head right now. Here we go. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. We're not far from it, right? We're, where we are today, uh, both Jeremiah and I are in Cary, North Carolina, pretty close to, to that ballpark. Uh, but uh, that's where we met and we've known each other well going on 35 years I'd say and um, and for myself I've been in and out of um, kind of the cybersecurity in the SaaS space most of the time spending times in startups but been in cloud security email security uh, a little bit of behavioral science in there um, and so mostly with startups having some fun trying to help uh, solve some challenges around cybersecurity and I'll, yeah, I'll mention one other qu quick thing too is my, my why, which I like to share with everybody, which you guys appreciate is, 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 is my family and four little ones. And so, uh, four. yeah, yeah. You, guys, we did well, you better get up every day and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to have four jobs. That's right. That's right. So we did get a surprise little, uh, you know, COVID baby in there very recently, our youngest and seven months old, but that's me. So if you want to know about me, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rob. But uh, that's, that's my why. That's why I get up every day. And that's, I think Brian, we might've talked about this before. It's like, oh, we definitely why? did. We definitely did. And I, I walked out saying, thank God I'm not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, how about yourself? Uh, you know, besides knowing Ed for the last 35 years, what are some of the travels that led you to Edison Marks? Yeah, 15 years in SaaS, cybersecurity, early stage startups, um, and, you know, a, a seat at basically every level on the business development sales marketing side. Um, 
created this sort of natural curiosity, I think, that, that has stirred conversation in Ed, for Ed and myself for the entirety of our careers, right? I mean, I think the best conversations we've had um, are, are the random ones. We'll pick up the phone and chat with each other and maybe an idea comes out of it. Uh, it's one of those types of conversations that, that you know, created Edison Marks, right? It's a little bit of experience, a little bit of, you know, timing and, uh, you know, a good cup of coffee and 15 minutes on the phone with your buddy sometimes that creates the best ideas. Um, and I think that's where we're at with Edison Marks, right? It, we had a little bit of all of those things and Ed called one day and said, I've got, I've got a project. I've got a capstone project that I've got to do to complete this MBA program. And uh, I need a great idea. Um, we had a lot of ideas, but, you know, we thought, let's come up with a new one. And again, about a half an hour later, we had this aha moment. And, and you know, it, it, that's what Edison Marks really is. Um, it was an aha moment for us. We thought we'd pursue it. We thought we'd push it. We um, had some lucky circumstances. Sometimes luck is, is, is to your benefit. And won a, won a grant with the NC Idea Micro uh, Group. And um, that gave us the opportunity to really push this forward as hard as we pushed it today. Uh, but yeah, 15 years of experience and a little bit of luck and a good cup of coffee sometimes gets it done. It was coffee. Jeremiah, it was well, coffee. I was trying to be politically correct for the show. <laughs> uh, Ed Listen might to have one had. of them, you'll realize this show can go a little rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was not coffee. Um, okay. But, you know, you, it, whatever gets the job done. Totally understood where you're coming from. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, you know, tell us maybe a little of the story behind the name Edison Marks, since it's neither one of your names. So, uh, what, you know, what, what caught, you know, what brought that together? Because that's an interesting one to me. I love to hear how people come up with these different names and uh, where that comes from. I'm assuming I might have an inkling on Edison, but what, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Now you, everybody jumps right to the to the Edison because of Ed. Uh, it is his his son's name, Edison. That was, uh, and I can say this with all honesty, uh, just happenstance. It worked. It's got some hard consonants and a nice rolling like into it. But um, for us, uh, we've been in around enough startups. We've been in around cybersecurity enough that uh, when we thought of names, you hear a lot of names that sound like uh, they sound techie, right? They sound mechanical. They sound like futuristic in the sense, right? We talk Mandy and, and, you know, I, I mean, we can go on and on and on. They all sort of sound harsh and techie. And for us, what we thought we were bringing the market, it's, it's deeply important that people understand that this is, that this is human at, at its basis. Right. And, and so we wanted it to sound like a name because we're just people on this side of the table and we're people talking to other people when we talk to small and medium businesses, when we talk to MSPs and MSP owners. And, and so when you think Edison Marks, that doesn't sound like, uh, like your traditional cybersecurity company with a traditional approach. And we're very much not those things. Um, you know, at, at our core, we're just people talking to people, trying to get them to do better at a very important thing. And we landed on Edison Marks uh, because it sounds like a name, right? It sounds like a person. That's it, plain and simple. And I'll mention this. It was it's it didn't help either of us because my kids are like, why is it one of my kids' names Grace? Like, why can't it be Grace? Or why can't it be <laughs> and, and then Jeremiah's got Jeremiah didn't mention he's got three little ones, you know. So it's uh, we're like, oh Edison, you know, is almost problematic. Like, why name after one of the kids that are involved here? Well, you got to have <laughs> so. everybody throw down in the background, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> but right. Uh, with that being said, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're uniquely doing out in the market space? Yeah. So, you know, these aha moments that we had is, is we realized, and I, and I know you guys know this, Rob, Brian, I'm sure your listeners understand is that cybersecurity is a big challenge. It's not going anywhere. And we're getting hit. Small businesses are getting hit at rates of large enterprises. A large enterprise is with millions of dollars in budgets. And so if the pandemic has taught us anything, you know, small businesses just, they can't take a hit and especially not like this. And so, you know, being in and around cybersecurity and, and for myself and Jeremiah too, is a lot of time we've been focused so much on the enterprise and folks invest in the enterprise, right? They get those big ticket software packages. And then you're trying to make that work for these small businesses. And thank, thank goodness for folks like, for folks probably that are listening here for them that are MSPs that are going and helping. So for us, it was kind of altruistic in its nature too. It's like, how can we help these small businesses? There's a lot of solutions being built for the enterprise. How can we help the small businesses? Um, and then it was an experience Jeremiah and I both had many years ago at a company called Opower that used behavioral science to help people to use less energy, how they impacted using their thermostat. 
both Jeremiah and I worked there for a period of time. We thought, why don't we apply similar approaches to help make small businesses more aware of the problem? Because what we've realized when talking with a lot of small business operators, and we've got a lot of friends that are own their own businesses, is they're great. They want to focus on what their business is. They want to focus on building houses. They want to focus on making the greatest cup of coffee, the best pizza. They don't want to think about cybersecurity. So how can we how can we help them be not the slowest gazelle out there on the plane, right? And so we built something that at first was really focused on helping the small businesses become aware and, and take some small steps. And then after talking with some more friends and uh, some more mentors, we shifted the approach to saying, hey, why don't we leverage this approach and let MSPs kind of white label this approach for themselves to go help their small businesses or small businesses uh, become more aware and drive business for them, drive client retention. And we're happy because we're helping small businesses, again, not be that slowest gazelle. I don't know if Jeremiah, you want to add anything there? Well, yeah, I think the idea here is uh, when we think about the MSP and, you know, I think if we go back to even your most recent ep- episode that was published anyway, I think it's um, uh, the gentleman out of Vegas, um, Alan. Alan Jackson, yes. Over yeah, at yeah. And so great, great conversation at Agilitech. And he talks in that episode about the tendency for uh, MSP owners to lean one way or the other, their business types, and we call them business bob, or they're, or they're, you know, technical in their nature, and they may be a little bit introverted. And so selling the way he did to get to his million knocking door to door, you know, as you mentioned, and, and going to build a business that way, going to actively, like proactively sell, right, is a really difficult thing for most MSPs. And what we saw on our hands as we talked to more small business owners and more MSPs and, and mentors was, we have a way to help an MSP provider grow their business in a way that they otherwise have never had presented to them, right? An opportunity to start a contextually relevant conversation uh, around a subject matter that can improve the operation for the SME while also, uh, you know, starting this conversation around cybersecurity without having to talk ones and zeros and, you know, acronyms and, you know, things that, that then make people's eyes glaze over. So that's sort of where we're at at the moment. And, and, uh, you know, everybody likes to say their thing is different, but living at this intersection of cybersecurity and small and medium businesses and, uh, you know, behavioral science, uh, we genuinely think this is a unique approach uh, to solving this problem. So talk a little bit more about the problem that you're solving and how you're going about doing that. So what we do today, go ahead, Ed. No, I was going to say, we probably look at it from two different areas, right? How are we helping small businesses, uh, which is our users, but then how are we helping our customers, which is MSB. So go, if you want to hit that, Jeremiah, go for it. Okay, so when we talk about the small and medium business operator, uh, again, walk into your local pizza shop, walk into your local coffee shop and say cybersecurity to the owner, right? Eyes glaze over. <laughs> Nothing unique there. And that's not any different for an MSP who's going in trying to sell services that are actually going to provide you know, IT benefit to the organization, right? They, if you go in and say cybersecurity, their eyes glaze over. And, and so what we're doing instead, rather than starting the conversation with, with a term that we know is is going to shut them down because they want to think about it for six minutes a year. Uh, we uh, are leveraging uh, a concept in behavioral science um, uh, that that you know it deals with cognitive overload. So when you talk about a, a complex subject, right, uh, you immediately get what's called cognitive overload. We're not going to go into all the science here today, but the the idea is when you have a situation around a complex subject, if you boil it down to uh, to one very sort of clear uh, opportunity uh, to drive action, which is social pressure. Uh, when you boil down to social pressure, if you can layer social pressure and you can get people to take action and get to an outcome that they know they want to get to, but they won't go there because of the cognitive overload. And so we build this report by scanning their peers, the small and medium business operators' peers. We do a passive scan. We scan their entire environment, and we created a scoring methodology of our own design. And none of that science. You can get scores from lots of companies like BitSight and Security Scorecard and the other. But what we do differently is instead of just presenting the score, we compare them to like businesses in their area by saying, hey, here's a high score, a low-risk business, and here's an average business in your area, and here's where you score in your cybersecurity lifecycle. Would you like to learn more about how you can improve your score? Here are your opportunities. And we communicate with them in a way that the lowest common denominator should be able to understand. We talk about a five-year-old being able to understand this and, and, and offering, you know, conversation around a VPN or adding multi-factor authentication or, uh, you know, or using a password management tool in a way that a five-year-old can understand, because that's how you're going to get the pizza shop 
uh, owner to pay attention and take action, right? Is to say, hey, here's how you compare to your peers. If you're interested in improving your situation so you're not the slowest gazelle on the plane, here's how you can do so and here's how easy it is to do that. When they run into situations where they can't actually take that action, the small and medium business operator, uh, that's where they engage with a managed services provider who's provided the support, right? And for the managed services provider, the value here is, I mean, as your listeners can say this more than, uh, you know, more effectively than even Ed and I can, um, you know, as we're, we're not 15 year veterans of this specific space, but what we've learned really quickly is customer acquisition, customer retention are two of the biggest problems in the space, right? The technical uh, personalities, the introverts who, you know, Alan talks about, are, are the type that, that they struggle to go out and actively grow their business. Well, what they have an opportunity to do here with this program is, is start a conversation uh, you know, around the topic that they've seen the business, the small and medium business operator already engage in because of the, the social pressure we leverage to get them to engage. Right? And the end result here is you've got an opportunity to drive business, you've got an opportunity to solve a big massive problem, and nobody has to become an expert in cybersecurity that doesn't want to. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah, I mean, we've hit a lot on the why and what the, the it can be, but maybe share a little bit about the how. You know, ultimately, yeah. if I'm an MSP that wants to work with Edison and Marks, what am I bringing to the table? You know, what 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 in, what are you giving me that something I'm missing from my arsenal today? And you know, you mentioned a little bit about the scans. How does that come into play? We build out of our scans a physical report. We're big believers in. Um, you know, in the senses, right? The five senses. So rather than just uh, piling on the email train, um, you know, and becoming noise in everyone's inbox, we have built a uh, custom design uh, and, and tied directly to behavioral science outcomes, uh, a physical report that we mail uh, after we scan and, and derive these comparisons. We mail this report to a small and medium business operator proactively, right? Uh, mail it to them and we try and drive action to a landing page Brian, have you ever interacted with Credit Karma? You know Credit Karma? Yeah, I know Credit Karma. You know, and my interactions fortunately haven't been very high with Credit Karma because I haven't <laughs> needed to, thankfully. But, uh, you know, certainly aware of what their totally capabilities understand. are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so the Credit Karma does, that has changed the way that people think about their financial health, right? They, they change the way that people interact with it, right? It's usually something you do when you're feeling stressed, but they've created a situation built around opportunity, right? A conversation built around opportunity. We're doing the same thing here. So just the same way as a small and medium business operator, uh, you know, we sort of think about their credit, right? We're, we're trying to get them to think about cybersecurity that way. So you scan this, you, you receive a report, you'll scan a QR code and you'll land on a dashboard that's going to feel a lot like a credit karma dashboard, right? You're going to see your score and you're going to see all the opportunities that are relevant to you given where you are in your cybersecurity life cycle. Uh, for a managed services provider, what what we've, what we've done is white label this entire process. So if you're having a hard time uh, sort of getting a, a new account to engage with you or getting an existing account to re-engage with you for maybe uh, an enhancement in your services, upselling, cross-selling, wherever it may be, this is an opportunity to proactively market to them and, and, and sort of treat this like a hyper-focused account-based marketing program where you get a whole lot of active information, uh, contextually relevant information about uh, a small and medium business operator that stirs and spurs, you know, highly relevant, uh, you know, sales conversations rather than it being cold. You get to present something of value out of the gate, something that's trusted. They land on the dashboard, they get a recommendation, they solve their multi-factor authentication problem with ease, and you see all of that. And if you want to start an additional conversation with them or send something different as a recommendation uh, in the next series of reports, you can do so now. Again, not anything that, you know, when we talk about scanning, that's wildly unique, but the approach, the idea of being able to proactively send these reports and get somebody to engage and then leverage that information to have a smart conversation is not something that, that MSPs have had up until this point. So that's the way it works. It's a platform that, that operates in, in front of the user, uh, you know, as a small and medium business operator with a, a dashboard on the back end for the managed services provider to interact with as well. So Rob, I throw this one to you. You're often talking about the lumpy mail concept, right? That some of the differentiators out there in selling is actually sending a physical piece in this age of electronics. And you know what intrigued me when I met Ed and Jer Jeremiah was, was what everything Jeremiah just talked about, the fact that this report that gives you some intelligence somewhere, you might be having some, some gaps, even though it's not the whole story yet, it's telling you where some of those outwardly surface gaps that are visible just from the outside can be, those vulnerabilities for a perimeter attack, right? And that allows the MSP to not only approach the customer 
with that information value right off the bat, but they're going to solve the problems that can't be seen by the report. You know, and that's the other critical path, right? How do we solve the people problems? How do we solve the inside the network problems that, uh, um, that you know, we might, we might not be facing otherwise? Yeah, I, I can tell you, like having that physical piece, it, when we're out there and we're doing our prospecting and, and we did hundreds and hundreds of thousands of calls last year, it cut the time to target by 50%. So that physical piece right now, everybody's so used to digital that it breaks through the white noise uh, because it's completely different. So it, it was literally, a, it went from 300 down to 150. It was that significant of a difference. But, you know, Ed, I, I have a question for you here. It, it, is this a prospecting piece? It, like, are you talking about this at a prospecting stage? Yeah, yeah, it is. So okay, so it, hold on, yeah. hold on, Ed. So you're saying that this is outside of the network looking in and piercing the walls from there? We, we, no. How is this being used? Is this what stage of the prospecting process is this being used? So far, with with MSPs that we're we're engaged with, this is for a lot of them. This is cold. It's a cold outreach to them. And so when we're doing our scans. It's defendable in our scoring, and it's 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 like a credit score on a scale of 300 to 850. We're checking for things like DMARC, email authentication, certificates. We're leveraging an open source uh, scanning tool, o OWASP uh, Zap mm -hmm. is what we're using to, to do it. So it's mm -hmm. very defendable. And so um, when we work with MSPs, what we've had some of them come to us and say, it's like, I don't even know how to tell you what my ideal customer profile is. I'm like, okay, well, let's, what, where have you had success? Tell me about how many employees you typically work with. Is have you done well in healthcare, or is it construct? What what's worked well? They give me that, and then we'll go curate a list. In some cases, now for some MSPs that have a bigger, bigger staff that have marketing on site, they say, "Hey, we already know who we want to target." Mm -hmm. But most of these are cold, so they're so we'll 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 go and get them a list of a hundred in a specific vertical that we think is going to be a good you know fit their kind of customer profile, and then we will we will scan them, we'll score those you know, hundred or so, let's say domains from those small businesses in that area. And then we will go and send that report out to draw that engagement, drive wow. engagement. So Rob, now, I always go back to yeah. your, uh, your top 250 list, right? Yeah. So imagine now you're working with your sales rep. He's working his top 250 list and you can sit down now and work on an account-based management strategy where you can actually show intelligence right to those 250 people you're trying to prospect to and warm up that phone call. And yeah. that's really where, you know, what, what, where I asked Jeremiah and Ed to come on. Cause I was like, that, that was kind of the light bulb that hit with me, which is I'm prospecting these people cold. I'm one of 10 people calling on them, telling you how great your MSP is or how great our MSP is. In the meantime, you're telling, you're going to tell me, well, my MSP's only screwed up five times. And as we all know, you got to run over the cat nine times before you get thrown out. That's so right. how do you actually bring something of value that's going to stir a conference and bring that emotion to the top level, going back to that human It's concept? a beautiful wedge, Brian. Yeah. It, I, I like this as a wedge and a differentiator for me to get past the white noise for my clients. It's, it's a, I like it. <clears throat> And I, I like love it. it because as a guy that drives a software company, that's really a platform that supports a human process. This is a way to, you know, continue to educate this customer right from the start about, hey, this is why you need to care about security. This is what it's all about. You're setting the tone from prospecting right into the account management stage that somebody that's with me would yeah. do. And, right. and you're hitting customers with different levels of information to also take them on that journey as well. That small pizza guy is not ready to hear about CIS controls on day one. That's way beyond their capability, but they can understand that there might be some gaps at their firewall or they don't have their email set up appropriately to get out those 200 pizza coupons right and, and, so. <laughs> and to, to bring it back to the alligator brain versus the higher brain and, and like being able to solve that for you know what did you call it cognitive overload like that whole fight or flight alligator brain type of concept where you're help, helping that that's big it's big it's one of the biggest problems in it nobody wants to hear about the next nomenclature that you're talking about with your it stuff like, I, I just don't want to get hacked, yeah. <laughs> right? Don't serve me up the alphabet suit. Just put it Right, right. And start talking well about said. all that stuff. Yeah. 
So, you know, uh, again, we're becoming fanboys quickly on this call, as we often do when we see something intriguing. But, um, you know, really what I, what I see here is the number one problem we hear from MSPs is customer acquisition, period. But and why is customer acquisition the number one problem they have? Because everybody's approaching it the same way. Let's yes. post up stuff on social media about cybersecurity because our customers never seen those articles before. It's the first time they're ever hearing those words, you know, so I'm going to do that daily and I'm going to interact with all the people that don't buy cybersecurity to tell me how great I am and all those kind of things that we, uh, you know, we do. And I don't mean that negatively. It's just we get into this sense of complacency, like doing the same thing we've been doing over and over is going to make it happen. We got to look at ways to kind of disrupt the apple cart, right? And uh and the approach that Edison Marks is kind of putting forth is at least a different slant on the lumpy mail conversation that we often have. Am I sending you yet another Rubik's Cube keychain, or can I send you something of value that might help you understand yeah. that you got a problem? Well, said, either way, I'm getting a piece of mail, and I don't get much mail except bills. <laughs> that's right. And even those we, come electronically more now. <laughs> yeah, that that and look, it's it's not. Um, I cannot overstate what we believe is the value of the physical piece, right? The physical component. I can't, I, I, people, it's a sense, right? You touch it, you feel it, you look at it. And, you know, and that gauge, that gets a reaction in itself. So again, well said, yeah, this is, that's all the angle. That's all of what we're trying to appreciate is deliver value. All right, but now first. I'm going to be, sorry, now I'm going to be devil's advocate though. We got only a couple of minutes left. So mm -hmm. what if I get this piece of mail and I am deeply offended that you went and scanned me? You know, what if, Ooh, you know, Brian. you're, you're, in, oh. you're you are infringing on my privacy. Ooh. Have you gotten yeah. any of those conversations? Have you gotten that rebuttal to date? Because it can't, you know, you're kind of peeking into the changing room a little bit. You know what I mean? Even if it yeah, is how forward, did you get you this? Know, outside there, you're, you're unsolicited. I'm getting told where my door's unlocked. Sure. I mean, yeah. well, even, even at Opower, uh, they, you know, creating the emotional response is, is an absolute must, right? That's the first step of the program is, right? We need to uh, create an emotional response. Sometimes that can be positive and sometimes that is absolutely going to be negative. And even to O-Power, when we were dealing with people's thermostats and utilities, they would respond uh, with a very deep negative emotional reaction to this. Like, how do you know what my power usage has been for the last 30 days or so on and so forth? Similar premise here. We have not yet received, you know, anybody uh, openly saying, you know, uh, uh, you know, re reacting with a, a deeply negative, uh, you know, response yet to date, we know it's going to come. But for us, the first step was that is a whole lot better than just throwing it away. Right. So that negative response, if you react in that manner, first, we're going to respect that because we're deeply respectful of the people who say, please don't send me any more of these things, right? You've got to be, because when this is all about earning trust, earning eyeballs for the right reasons and delivering information when you know, it's going to make a positive impact and no more. Um, and if we, we honor that and we do that, we have a chance to earn them back later. But if they have a deeply negative emotional response and they'll engage with us, that's an opportunity for us uh, to get them to understand why this is valuable. If they say, go away, great. Okay. No sweat. No, no worries whatsoever. We know this isn't going to impact 100% of the recipients. No, there's no uh, you know, sort of diamond in the rough for that yet. But if we can move the needle enough to ensure that a large group aren't uh, going to wake up tomorrow and be the slowest gazelle on the plane, then we think we've we've done justice to the the large, uh, you know, the broader group, the small and medium business operators. So that's what we're aiming for. But we deeply respect that negative reaction uh, for for both its good and bad opportunities. And like most, it'll probably be fairly infrequent, but it, it could exist out there, right? You know, and you have to take off the fanboy hat for at least a moment, right? But uh, <laughs> that said, um, Rob, do you got anything else you'd like to, to close with today? Uh, no, this was a good one. I, I, I like this. I like this idea. Uh, and, and I like the concept of this. And, uh, you know, looking forward to I'm, I'm on your website right now, looking at it more. Uh, it, it, th the one thing is, you guys are a startup, right? You, you guys are right. kind of new here. Uh, and you guys white label this for your MSP. And, and you get right. them. I uh, like the, the only concern I would have is, you know, are, are you guys strong enough to make it past you know the, the two of you moving forward into a, like a bigger environment here it, this is needed this is a big one here the, like if you guys have you guys thought about that what are you guys doing and where are you guys going to be in the near future at a trade show or somewhere where people are definitely going to be coming up to you for this one 
yeah. but can I, I'm going to attack thing one. I'm going to let Ed attack thing two with where we're going to be soon. But with thing one, if you mean, do, are we going to over be able to overcome an opportunity where do people know the Edison Marks brand name? Do SME operators and pizza owners know the Edison Marks brand name? And to that, I reply and I say, you don't know O-Power, but you've definitely received when there were reports, right? They, they went public in 2014. They became Oracle Utilities. They sent hundreds of millions of, of reports around your utility bill globally. Uh, you don't know the name Olo, uh, and you've definitely ordered food online at one point in your life from a restaurant that's a multi-unit <laughs> chain, and Olo is the backbone of that industry, and they are now publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. My point to that is to say, I don't think we need to. The trusted party in this relationship is the service provider whether it be a managed services provider or a professional services provider, maybe an insurance benefit advisor, something along those lines. That's the trusted party in this relationship. The person who says, hey, I'm going to put my my brand on this and put it out in front of my neighbors who run the pizza shops and the coffee shops. That's the logo that we think needs to be prominent on this, not Edison Marks. And so we're okay being the backbone of this conversation and not being the brand that sits on the front because we know we can still, uh, you know, take this thing public if, if we are that lucky and that successful, if we have to, just as those before us have done. Ed? Well, well said. Yeah, I mean, we're this is tons of fun uh, for us and, and where we want to go. Like, you, Rob and Brian, you can probably get a sense. Like, as we get engagement with small businesses, there's going to be a whole bunch of data, interesting data that we're going to be able to have, right? Like, that's going to be helpful. And there's ways that we want to give back, again, too, to the community, because you're seeing a lot more in behavioral science for health, for finances, a lot of different areas. You haven't seen it as much just yet on the cybersecurity side, but behavioral science, if harnessed properly and used well for social good, can be really, uh, it can be a good thing. So we want to give back to the community. So for where we're going, I mean, I think we can help tremendously in this space long term. Uh, I think we're going to have a whole bunch of interesting data that can be beneficial. And we want to find ways to give back because, again, being in cybersecurity, you know, this. We all it's altruistic by nature, right? Why we are we're involved? We want to help out any way we can. So there's a lot of exciting things that I think you could look for from us in the next five, ten years. Go oh, faster than that. Oh, it's going to be yeah. this is this is a good one, Brian. You got anything else before we're we're kind of coming up to the end here? Well, we're uh, coming up to the end. What I want to do is, of course, thank uh, Jeremiah and Ed for joining us. But uh, yeah. Rob, really want to thank you and Tim too for uh, you know spending the last hundred episodes here with me. Uh, you know, I know you're kind of hedging bets on whether you could do a hundred more, but as the guy with perfect attendance, I'll be here for the next hundred. You know, you're <laughs> always showing off, always bragging, Damn sales guys. But all kidding aside, <laughs> I'm really excited to, you know, really excited about the hundred episodes we brought. Great to have you, Ed and Jeremiah, on as our hundredth episode. I think we've really top, covered a topic of how to look different and how to share some information that people need today. And yeah. You know, I look forward to seeing where you guys go and uh, where our next 100 take us as well. Yeah, and, and we will definitely be uh, including your LinkedIn profile on the podcast and also on MSPBusinessSchool.com uh, to include YouTube as well. Uh, it, it, before that, you know, fellas, I really appreciate this was a good one. I love it when there's this out of, out of box idea coming in that's a disruptor, right? This is a disruptor idea and I, I like it a lot uh, and I wish you guys well. And I look forward to seeing you at the trade shows and watching your success. So uh, as you. always, uh, thank you very much, fellas. Brian, congratulations. You stuck with you me too. for 100 episodes. That's it. All right. Who would have thought? We probably wondered if we were going to get through three. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, guys, don't watch you. the first three, though. <laughs> they <Exactly>. were brutal. <laughs> guys, thank you so much, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.